I will never know what it's like to be deaf, but I do know what it's like to be hospitalized. And it's a scary place to be. My aunt, who is deaf, was hospitalized for an infection and asked for an interpreter. And she was told she could only have one when the doctor did his rounds. One day, she was having difficulty breathing, and the nurse didn't understand this sign right here. When they denied my aunt that interpreter, she never had a chance. When I found out that my aunt had died, I knew it could have been prevented. I mean, isn't there something that says healthcare is a fundamental right? But for who? So my mom is deaf, and I actually have six deaf family members. I wanted to become a nurse, because growing up, I saw how often deaf people's needs were ignored in healthcare. I started to focus on diabetes which deaf people are three times more likely to develop. And I kept meeting patients like Tamiko, who've been misdiagnosed or mistreated due to lack of communication and consideration. Two years ago, my doctor had told me that I was pre-diabetic. I didn't understand what that was. I was sick and really tired. I finally took myself to the ER. They told me that I had to stay overnight, but they wouldn't give me an interpreter. Every three hours, a nurse would come in and give me a shot, and I didn't know why. I was terrified. They were doing these tests, and it was super painful. I wasn't understanding anything. I was trying to read lips. It was awful. There was no communication with me. And after two nights in the hospital, it was only after I read the discharge papers that I knew my diagnosis type 2 diabetes. University of Utah Medical Center. So diabetes is complicated no matter who you are and what language you speak. And here at the University of Utah, we're really striving to improve the language of care. It's about culture, it's about geography, it's about socioeconomics. Right now, healthcare is mostly accessible through English, which is a huge problem if you're deaf or speak another language. So Michelle and I joined forces here in Utah. What we've envisioned here is to make access to healthcare equal for the deaf community. And our first task was to form an all deaf community advisory board. I was in these online deaf diabetes groups looking for people who were open to sharing their experiences. I met Diana, Michael, and Tomiko. So this is my insulin pump. Maybe we can add a third option? And I know it's not easy. And you're frustrated with that lack of communication access. We all are. And pretty soon we had a team from all over the country. We call them our citizen scientists. And we named the program Deaf Diabetes Can Together. Their feedback is essential. It goes directly to our team here at the university, where we have dedicated researchers, psychologists, statisticians, and design producers who all turn their ideas into reality. This is a mock storyboard, so we can see how the design of it is feeling to us. Does anyone have any suggestions? It's not just, let's get your feedback and then leave. It's, let's get your feedback and you're part of this process. Let's go to Mika first. So the reason I sign nearly diabetes is because if you say pre-diabetes, it sounds like you don't have anything at all. They're the ones who are really driving what we do because they're telling us what they need. They're co-designing healthcare with us. It feels so amazing to be a part of helping the deaf community, a part of this family, this team. We are the team. What we're learning is helping us build a new model of care for deaf patients, and one that we can replicate for underrepresented communities. I 
think my aunt would be so proud. Together with our patients, we're changing the way healthcare works.